Well, hello there, beautiful shrimp people. In today's video, we are going to be looking at several different types of moss in my tanks book because, guys, I have a lot of tanks and some of them just don't have enough plants in them in general and I want to add some more moss to them, right? So the moss that I'm specifically looking at today is a plant that is called flame moss, right? I'm not 100% sure if it is flame moss, so what we're going to do in a second, guys, is we're going to go up and what I want you to do, right, is I want you to go into the comment section below and when I go past the tank, I want you to time stamp it. So if you don't know what a time stamp is, just put whatever the time is on the screen on the video, 0, 0 or 0, 0 point whatever the time is, just say 0, 0, 0, something like that, if it was 30 seconds into the video. And tell me what kind of moss do you think this is, right, because I'm pretty sure that this moss up here is flame moss. Now, I know flame moss is one of the better mosses to have in a shrimp tank because it grows vertically up, it grows straight up like this, and guys, it doesn't tend to stick to stuff so well, right? So it's easier to manage in the tank. It doesn't stick to the glass, it doesn't stick to the substrate and other plants and make a mess of the tank. It's just easier to manage in general, right? So my hope is today that we can actually attach it to some of these uh, Ceramic things that I got a long time from Relcon Aqua. I have probably about five of them here. We're going to tie our flame moss to this. And my hope, as I said, is that we can actually grow it really nice in some of my tanks. And uh, my fear is that it doesn't work. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let me show you this curious moss because yeah, I've never quite seen a moss like it that just grows straight up like this. And as I said, let me know in the comment section below if it is actually flame moss. And I've showed my other tanks as well guys and I want you to time stamp and tell me what these mosses are as well. Let's do it. Okay shrimplets, let me take you off the stand rail. I'll show you what I mean guys, but we're not having enough moss in some of my tanks right here. Look, look, I would like to put some moss onto the top of these sponge filters. And uh, you can see in these tanks here, I don't really have a lot of moss actually on the sponge filters themselves. Some of them are very Basic looking, like up here we should have some moss, right? So let's look at some moss. And guys, tell me in the comment section below what you think they are. By the way, how do you like these lovely bamboo shrimp here? I just actually fed them. I'll get some macro footage of them up because I think they look so good here. But guys, what do you think of this moss here? This looks like, to me, just your bog standard java moss. Just saw another bamboo shrimp right there. Looks like to me like your bog, bog standard java moss. This looks also like java moss, although it, this one seems to want to just grow up like this. You see how much this has grown in the, what is it, like a few weeks that we've had this tank up and running. It's going to be taking over the tank soon. Now let's uh, look into these tanks. So we have facades here. This one moss here is interesting because I don't know what this is either. I actually got this from one of the tanks, so this might be flame moss, but it might be just that it's lying on its side, it hasn't adjusted itself because you can see right, if I, if I was going to say if I turn the camera like this, but this GoPro kind of like fixes that issue, you can't really turn cameras on this side unless I turn off the function. Now let me guys know in the comment section below if you think this is also flame moss, although looking at the spacing between the nodes, this one's very regular, so this might be just... Java moss, possibly, I'm not sure. Let me see, where else do we have moss? Nothing here, nothing here. Now, this is definitely Java moss here. Just a mess of moss. And then you see stuff like this. This looks like it's also Java moss, but it's grown a little bit straighter, probably with the lights. We can see with the nodes how it's. Uh, branches off pretty regularly. I don't think flame moss does this. And I think this moss here is exactly the same moss. You see how it branches off on all the different nodes and whatever else. So let me show you the stuff that I think is flame moss because it looks quite different from the other ones. You see it? I am pretty sure this is flame moss because when you look at the strands, there is no other real nodes on the strand itself that I can see. So that indicates to me that it's flame moss. It just wants to grow straight up as well. So that's kind of the giveaway. Right, so I'm going to take some of this stuff out of here. I have to keep in mind that we have baby shrimp in this tank. Uh, so we'll have to make sure that we inspect this moss before we start to tie it and stuff. And uh, yeah, guys, I'll stop blathering. I'll get some of this out. We'll get a little bowl of it and we'll start to tie it. 
All right, guys, let's start tying our moss because, uh, yeah, we don't want to keep this out of the water for too long, right? So you need to have your squirt bottle like this and just remember to give it a little squirt every so often. Guys, I've also taken some macro footage of this stuff because yeah, I think you want to see that as well. Looking at this, some of it is like no nodes on long fronds, but then there is some. So I don't know if this is just elongated java moss or or what, but you can see the growing conditions that was in there. It was all growing straight up like before. So yeah, let's get on with this. Let this look. One straight fund, frond like this. I don't know why I'm saying frond if that's a term with ferns, java ferns, because ferns have fronds on them, don't they? So you can see here there's no nodes at all. I think that's quite a good uh, picture to show you there. All right, let's get this uh, started up and running. So we have, how many do we have? Five. Let's do one at a time. So guys, you'll need some thread, box standard thread. And what I like to do, guys, is I like to take an arm's length of thread for each one. And then I'm just going to cut it. You will see what I mean in a second. Right, and all you do with this, guys, is you want to start with your thread going across your item, right, like this. And you're going to go halfway around once, and then you're going to go over itself. Like this, right? And this will lock in your loose part here. It will help to lock it in without you having to tie knots, right? So you have all this extra thread here to work with. Let's give this a little spray. And guys, uh, this mosses in general, they tend to... Duckweed there. They tend to grow quite fast when you do it this way. So let's just grab some of these thorns. I'm actually going to cut them because I have scissors right here. And this is enough to get one plant started. Now, I did notice that there was some duckweed there, but it will be fine. Right, so you just want to spread it out over your item as much as you can. The more you spread it out, the better the plant will grow eventually. Alright. So then you want to go with your string, your thread back over at least three or four times right because this is actually what's going to hold down your uh, plant this is already enough you can see that this is enough so there's one let's cut off the excess and there is our first plate a little squirt like this and it's up to you you want to put it straight in the tank but we we've got another four of these to go so yeah let's get these let's get our production line up a little bit faster than it was arm's length of stuff. Cut your thing. And start our no ray. So this time I'm going to leave this part just a wee bit longer. And we're going to go over like this. And this part will now be the bottom because I want this to be on the bottom. And so we're going to flip it over like this and then we're going to start to place our moss same thing again and guys it is up to you how fine you cut this or how you want to do it better than I'm doing it here I'm just doing it because I want to get this stuff into the tanks super fast is that a bit subwasser tongue in there you see it it is you see it hiding in plain sight a wee bit subwasser tongue let me put that in the tank like this Let's put a little bit more on because we have an awful lot of it here. Another bit of water time. And let's start to tie our thing. One, two, three. Right, so ideally this is the minimum you want is at least three, four, Five. I won't get any more than this. So you turn it over. Remember the stuff that we left in excess? Let's start to turn it. So this one will be much easier, right? So, guys, I like to do it more than once, under and over. This is a trick I learned from mountaineers tying shoelaces. <laughs> <laughs> I 
under and over, and then, yeah, under and over again, under and over, a few times, you can twist it with your fingers, and then pull it tight, so there's our little knot, and as I said, it's up to you if you want to trim all this up like this, get it nice and neat, whatever, looks okay, doesn't it? Give it a little spray, just remember and soak your stuff every so often. And we'll get on to our third one, spray the block. Yeah, I don't know what this is made from, it kind of looks like some kind of, it almost looks like cement. It almost looks like some kind of cement. And I know it's shrimp safe because I've used them before in tanks and I've actually bred a lot of shrimp in one of my tanks with this in it. One, two. Let me just divide this up guys because we have another two here. Let me actually divide them up and put them onto the block so we use all of our stuff all at once, right? You know what I'm saying? So we use everything that we have here. Like this. It's not very pretty, but it will be once it starts growing up the way. Like so, you see? Like so. I'm an aquascaper now. Right, so one two, three, if you have enough here. So that, guys, this was, as I said, this was just an arm's length. Maybe we can get one more. Maybe we can. So you see, I've went the opposite way from my stuff this time. Yeah, I've left it a wee bit short again. My vision isn't the best and I keep on leaving it short. Why, Mark? Why make it harder for yourself? Let's see, can I make that longer somehow? Unless I tie it on the top here. Just for this one, guys, so that was another mistake. I keep on leaving it too short. The good thing about this stuff is it's quite jaggy. So when you're tying your knots and stuff and pulling your thread, it actually gets a really good grip. Alright, other methods that you can use as well to do this, guys, is, is fishing line, which I don't like using so much. And that is okay. Put duckweed in there. Two bits of duckweed. Any more? Let's tidy this up. Tidy it up a wee bit. Let's tidy that knot up. Just make sure it's a bit tidier than it is. And there you go, there's our next one. Two more to go. Right, will I learn, will I learn from our previous mistakes regarding the line position? Right, so an arm's length. I think I did two arm's length in the beginning, just a wee bit too long. You see, because it all depends on the media that you're using to attach it to in the first place. Alright, so we're going to try it with the stuff on it this time, like this, right? So we're going to go in the middle. I'm going to leave a big length this time, <laughs> right, and then let's see. We'll go go this way. We're trying to go. go we're trying to go with the floor. Right? We're going to cross over our line, like this, and let's see how this works. So one, we need at least three, right? So it's already one, two. So it's already held down. Let's see. Can we get another one? Three. I think we can. Let's see, turn it over. Did it work? Now that was much better. So you're better to go in line with your knots. Yeah, the reason I prefer thread over fishing line is uh, fishing line is just a tiny bit harder to tie. Guys, I was a fisherman for a long, long time for uh, since I was a kid, since I was like maybe five or six or something. I've been a fisherman. So, yeah, it goes to show me I've done all different types of knots before and it's always easier to use thread than fishing line. Fishing line is just, you need to do specialised knots. Thread, you basically do overhand knots and that's it. That's looking good. Not too shabby, Mark, not too shabby. Give it a good squirt and make sure our ones over here are nice and watered. So we have five here, guys. I think I have about five or six tanks. 
that are uh, plantless or there's very little plants in them that we can add to this top of our sponge because this is what I want to do with this. I want to place it, like you imagine if that's a sponge, I want to place it on top like this so it grows down and off. Or with flame moss, if it is flame moss, it will just go, grow straight up. But that, that is something we can adjust for once we've done it. All right, so this is the last one. Let's try and do this one good. We're going to use all these little bits here. All these little bits, make sure we haven't got any duckweed in there. There was some duckweed in the other tank, but let's see. So we want to make sure this is long on this side. Longer. You see it longer. We're going to turn it over and we're going to overlap the piece that we just did. So that is now secure. This is secure. And uh, let's get this done at least three times like we've been talking about the whole, the whole video. Three times. At least three. And this will hold it down lovely. So we're going to get four, so that's a bonus. Maybe five. Yeah, that is definitely a bonus. So, so you can see here, guys, it's like even on each side. So I just simply need to turn this over. And maybe I need to tie or not. As I said, right, we're talking about the, the mountaineer knot, knot that I learned. It's simply, guys, rolling. The, the loop in itself more than once, right? So that's once, twice, three times, right? So this is what you do if you have hiking boots. Do this kind of knot on your laces are very unlikely to come undone. So you want to do the same with the top bit as well, that th same rollover thing I was talking about. It just makes the knot a wee bit stronger. So that's one, two. I'm just going to do two for the top part. Yeah, I need uh, better glasses than this, I think. I've actually got my reading glasses and I'm struggling to see. That'll do. That'll do lovely. See it? Nice little knot. And guys, see all these little bits that we have lying around here? These will all get added back to another tank for our future growing projects. Let's uh, trim this off just to keep it a little bit nicer looking. Got a duckweed there. It was a tiny bit dark, like I'd, like I'd snipped it, you see it? Alright, so this is just to make it look a little bit pretty. And yeah, there is our... There is our flame moss, tied and ready to go. Look at these guys. Didn't we do a great job? And we probably could have put more in some of them, I think, but... Yeah, maybe trim this one a wee bit more, see it? Trim it into our little container here. Get in there. I just want it to look a little bit neat for when put into the tanks. I think it helps probably spur its growth as well. And it'd be nice to see if this is flame moss. I think it is. Guys, as I said, let me know in the comment section below. But let's um, add these to the tanks. I'm going to try and put one in each tank that is uh, very, very sparsely planted. Alright guys, let me get you off this mountain here. So we have... Two tanks here, and I'm going to put two in this bottom tank here, and we're going to put one over here. Let's have a look. Let's pick up any one. Like so. And yeah, these guys had babies uh, sometime last week, maybe two weeks ago, because the, the young are actually getting quite big now. I actually see a couple of red ones in here too. One red one, one red one. Most of them are black. So these will most likely be uh, fishbone galaxies, some of these anyway, and then there'll be hybrids of the ones that we did. Let's uh, get our moss into our tank. And let's see where that shrimp is there. Let's put it right there. I want to put it dead center. Move. Let's see, hopefully that will stay there. Doesn't look the prettiest, but yeah, if, if this is flame moss, eventually we'll probably put it nearer the, the base of the tank so it grows up straight properly. Or guys, what we might do is actually have it as our main plant. I quite like the idea of having just moss in our tanks. But I also like this Nuri as well, right? So let's put our stuff into our other tanks. We have an empty tank here. Oop. Let's put you in the middle. This sponge filter in this back one came off the other day. It's came off again, you see it there? So it's a dodgy, dodgy sucker. 
and uh, yeah, it came off, guys. And see this top part here? It came off and it went outside the tank, so it was pumping water outside the tank. You mother effer. Let's get this one into this bottom tank. So I'll see if I have any more of these little ceramic plate things, but you can use other things as well. Like anything that has any kind of weight to it, you can tie moss to, like these little ceramic things you can tie moss to. And if you have wood, as an example as well, you'd probably tie them. And I'm going to put two in here because, yeah, I think this tank needs it. It needs a wee bit more something in it. So this will look pretty up here. Purdy. And here's our last one. And remember guys, what I said at the beginning, go into our tanks and put down the timestamps and tell me what moss you think is what. Alright, so I can start to identify these things. If these grow definitely straight up, they're definitely flame moss, I think. So there you have it guys, there is our video for today. Let me know in the comment section below if you think this project will work, our flame moss extravaganza. Will it flop or will it succeed? Guys, also, if you would like to become a channel member on a more serious note, then please do click the join button that will be... Oh my god, I always guess the wrong way, let me think, Mark. I'm going to say this way because I'm always wrong. I'm always wrong with this kind of stuff. Anyway, guys, love you loads, channel members. Thank you for the support, and uh, I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Thanks for watching.